so it is running.
Lutheran Church, we gather in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world, in order to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to remember before God our sister Kay, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we give you thanks for giving Kay to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage here on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I will now invite Diane Lund to come forward. a resident of Siren, Wisconsin, passed away on November 30th, 2022, with her loved ones by her side. Kay was born on September 19th, 1930, in Daniels Township, Wisconsin, to parents Otto and Neva Cable Colander. Kay married the love of her life, Kenneth Ken Stoner, on December 2nd, 1951, in Reno, Nevada, after a whirlwind courtship of 10 days. <laughs> to this union, four children were born. They eventually made their permanent home on the Colander family farm in Daniels Township of Burnett County, where they dairy farmed and Ken butchered for the Frederick Locker plant. Kay attended the Polk County Teachers College once her children were all in school, and then worked as an elementary school teacher in Siren, Wisconsin for over 20 years. After she retired, the greetings and memories from her former students and her colleagues flowed in all through the years. She greatly treasured those stories and memories. Kay, along with her husband, Kenneth, served Emanuel Lutheran Church faithfully, remembering her family heritage there. In Kay's free time, she enjoyed being outdoors in the summertime, tending to her vegetable and flower gardens, going to garage sales, going to retired school teacher events, and reading. She also enjoyed traveling, dancing, and spending time with her family. Kay is preceded in death by her loving husband, Kenneth, parents, brother Walter Colander, and sister Leora Nordquist. She is survived by her children, Neva Jane Winkler, Nancy and husband Brian Anderson, Keith and wife Debbie Stoner, and Stephen and wife Terry Stoner, seven grandchildren, Kristen, Allison, Katie, Joel, Jeremy, Holly, and Eric, four great-grandchildren, Noah, Lila, Luke, and Grayson, sister Grace and husband Jack Sexton, along with many other relatives and friends. The Stoner family extends grateful thanks to the traditions of Frederick team for their wonderful care of Kay in these last years of her life.
for joining us today for this celebration of Kay's life. I have the privilege of being able to help Kay amongst many others in these last years of her life when she couldn't do everything for herself anymore. And her mantra was always that she wanted to be home. And even though she couldn't stay on the farm, she has gone to her eternal home where she is once again with Kenneth and all those loved ones who have gone before her. And with faith, we know that we will see them all again someday. Safely home. I am home in heaven, dear ones, all so happy, all so bright. There's perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All the pain and grief are over, every restless tossing past. I am now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. Did you ever wonder, I so calmly travel the valley of the shade? 
Oh, but Jesus well illumined every dark and fearful glade. And he came himself to meet me on that way so hard to tread. And with Jesus' arm to lean on, could I have one doubt or dread? Then you must not grieve so sorely, for I love you all so dearly still. Try to look beyond our shadows. Pray to trust our Father's will. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idle stand. Do your, love, do your work while life remaineth, and you shall rest in Jesus' land. When that work is all completed, he will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting. Oh, the joy to see you come. When your bulletin is printed, the 23rd Psalm, let us read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in my past for his name's sake.
I didn't think about that song until I read the scriptures when we talked about that. Um, my chains are gone. Um, the last few years with Kay was filled with lots of stories and memories. She talked always, and we could always talk about family, her faith, her church family, her dear cousins, always preceded with cousin. I mean, Cousin Marvel. Um, and she, like I, didn't usually um, say scripture verses and say what they were and where they came from. But whenever we read some together, talked about some together, she'd always say, that's a really good one. chains are gone and um, we really can celebrate wholeness and peace for her. So today from the book of Romans chapter 8 who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence 
and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Praise and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was not fortunate enough to know Kay before her time at Traditions, but from visiting with her, listening to people's stories about her, not to mention the great family she raised, all these things paint a picture of a most remarkable mother, grandmother, friend, and teacher. It is obvious that this beloved child of God is a saint. Now you may think it's odd to refer to Kate in the present tense saying she is a saint instead of she was. And the reason is, is because as Christians, we're able to say that she still is all of those things. As Christians, we do not believe Kay is gone, that the tomb is closed, we confess towards the end of our creed that we believe in the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. She is part of that communion of saints. She is now in heaven. And the community of all believers is gathered around her. Think of that. Picture that image. We believe that through her baptism, Kay was claimed as God's beloved daughter. And as Paul says, we who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection shall certainly be raised in his resurrection. And as we just heard from Terry in Paul's letter to the Romans, what will be able to separate us from the love of God? Jesus tells us today, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I go before you to prepare a dwelling for you. One can only imagine what Kay is experiencing now in the house of the Lord. Maybe it's like the 23rd Psalm, her no longer being in want, her body, mind, soul restored, eating in the presence of God, and with her loved ones. One could imagine her beaming and saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But where does that leave us? Like all Christians, we stand in a space of now and not yet, of living with dying. And that's the tension we feel during this Advent season, especially. Patiently waiting for the now and not yet. And it's true, we're all searching for truth and meaning for our lives. And too often we look to the world for truth and meaning for us. Part of our problem is that most of us are too tied to this world, this side of heaven. We often think that this is the land of the living, and when we die, we go to the land of the dead. But friends, the opposite is true. This is the land of the dying. When our life here is over, we are brought to the place of eternal life. This is Kay's faith. She had that faith. She has that faith. And this family is a living example of that kind of faith, that trust in God. Today we see more clearly than usual the sad reality of the valley of the shadow of death. But even in the midst of the sad valley, we do not fear or lose hope. How can I say that? Because of Emmanuel, God with us. One has to wonder about the name of the church Kay so loved. Emmanuel, God with us. 
Right? His life is too unpredictable and too brief to live it without God at its center. The truth of the matter is that every one of us is just one heartbeat away from death. For everything there is a season, right? You just heard that. But even though we walk through the valley of the dead, we will fear no evil. For God is with us. Ultimately, the good shepherd will lead us safely home to our true home, our heavenly home. And surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Yet even in these days, when time comes to an end, we will dwell with him forever. I have this wonderful picture that I didn't share with the family uh, yet. Kay at Traditions was quite a lovely, uh, char lively character, <coughs> lovely. Uh, and uh, her uh, dear friend Doris, who was her roommate, uh, they, they shared a bathroom. They were just the funniest pair, right? They were hilarious. And it just went to show that Kay made friends really wherever she went. Even if it wasn't with Doris and she was out in the uh, dining room, she was always surrounded by people. And if she was alone, she'd go and seek them out. That's for sure. She loved people. And she loved God. She loves God. I will show you that picture later on today. And I hope we'll get a chuckle. Because two saints, both Doris and her, are in the heavenly realm. And we know we will see them again. So along with Kay, who joins the saints in heaven, I ask us all to stand and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of our Lord, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. To your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Caroline Stoller. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, 
and to the blessed rest of everlasting peace, yes. and into the glorious company of all the saints in life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to you, beloved people of God, receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing Abide With Me in number 629. 629.